Okay, in your book, we're on page two. Hey man, I'll be trying to sneak out of here. We're on page 272, troubleshooting a complex circuit. Uh-oh, whenever you see the word complex, you think, not simple. Ooh, that's frightening. So now, it says, the first thing we need to consider in a thermostat, the thermostat's not standard, but a version and illustration purposes. The thermostat is equipped with a selective switch for heat and cool. And it goes to this uh, electric relay. Now, if you look at picture uh, 373, they show a picture of the heat coil going to the thermostat. All right, but I want to tell you about the manual switch. What is the manual switch? All right, the manual switch is the switch that the homeowner can actually change back and forth. On this thermostat, notice it says fan on and auto. So they take power and send it here. And when it when they have it on fan on, it, remember the last video, there's a path that's created with a power supply, current will flow. So now the current's flowing to the terminal G. G is standard on a uh, thermostat for fan, the blower, the indoor fan. So it energizes the indoor fan coil and the other side goes back to what? Neutral. Notice 24 volts here, that's a load. Power passing, power consuming. Switch, load. So it's sending the power to it. Now your book says on page 374 that follow the power from the R terminal to the fan selector switch on the G terminal and it goes to the indoor fan. When it's switched on, the fan will run all the time, even when the fan's off. In the, um, when the fan is in the auto position, it will wait for the call for cool. So that tells us that cooling is, must be connected to this. Okay, cooling must be connected to that. So let's go ahead and look at that real quick. Okay, so you can see in this picture right here, okay? Here is the fan. Notice it's not on on anymore. This picture's in your book, big and bright right there. You're just following along with me. And it goes to the indoor fan. Now here is the circuit for cool. Notice power is being sent to the terminal R. R is one of the most important terminals on your thermostat. R means the power. So when R gets energized, it says, where am I gonna send the power? All right, so your, your thermostat in essence is just a bunch of switches. All right, it's just a bunch of switches. It takes power from the transformer going through R and you decide in your thermostat where you wanna send it, okay? So here we're gonna send the power along the path to cool. When it goes through cool, notice it. this closes on a rise in temperature and continues the path to the outdoor contactor coil. The contactor coil is always connected on the thermostat to the letter Y. It's usually a yellow wire. G is a green wire, R is a red wire. So that energizes the coil, but notice the power is also connected to the fan, G, and that turns on the indoor fan. So when power flows to the contact, the call it also flows to the fan. And that's how that runs right there. And your book says, um, that's exactly what your book says right there on page 374 when, you, when you're following along. Now it says in the next picture, it opens the circuit. Notice when the thermostat starts to cool, right here, the circuit is open. See that in your book? But the cooling anticipator 
what? Can bring that circuit on early. So even though this circuit's open, which shouldn't allow power to my contactor or my indoor fan relay, notice the cooling anticipator at some point will turn it on early. It's anticipating this close. That gives the air conditioner time to get up to full capacity and start cooling earlier before the thermostat makes, okay? Because if not, you could have extra heated room. Nobody likes heated room. That's why we do air conditioning, right? Nobody likes heated room, okay? So let's talk about that for a second, all right? I'm gonna pull this up on the board right now and I want you to look at this. The first one we're gonna look at is this one right here. Who saw that? Nobody saw that. Now look at this. Here is our transformer that's taking 120 volts and, and then stepping it down to 24 volts. R is getting the power at right here soon as this cool makes like you just saw it sends power to the contactor coil it's also sending power to the indoor fan which both of them have to come back as common common of course is connected to the other side of the transformer okay so you got that next here I took that fan circuit out and drew in a reversing valve for a heat pump. Remember, a reversing valve in the heat pump is energized during cooling mode, not heating mode. So R now sends power when this makes and this closes to my contactor coil, my indoor fan G, and O is energized, which is an orange wire. And that connects to my load here, which is my reversing valve outside, and then they come back to common. That's how that's connected. Tomorrow I'll be getting really in depth because we'll talk about single and dual transformers um, on a system, including an outdoor transformer. We'll make that simple for you. Now here, check this out. Here's one with a lot more options, but I want you to see that every one of these um, devices here is a load. The thermostat is nothing but a set of switches passing the power to the loads. And the other side goes back to the transformer. So power comes in for Y for the contactor, G to the fan relay, and it also can energize over the reversing valve. W goes to the heat relay coil. And of course, the thermostat can be powered with common and notice all of these loads have to be hooked up with common on that side. Is there any questions about that so far? All right. Nobody's got any questions about that. Well, y'all doing pretty good then. Really good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this off for a second since it already recorded. And, um... Well, no, let's go ahead and watch, uh, see what we got in your book real quick. Troubleshooting the thermostat on 375. During equipment malfunction, the thermostat is often misunderstood and suspected to be broken. Service technicians should remind themselves to approach the job that one power leg enters, that's your R, and distributes power to wherever it needs to be on demand, it could be Y, G, W, but power comes into R. Okay, let's remember that. And then the time I'll have the light coming back on for this. So if you wanna follow along with your PowerPoint tool on another device, that's fine too. 
All those PowerPoints are available to you on the MCC. Now, <clears throat> it should be restated the thermostat is nothing more than a set of switches. There is a manual selector switch with off, cool, and heat, an automatic temperature sensing component. When the conditions are correct, the thermostat will pass power on through the device. When the system is calling for heat, it goes to the heat relay. When it's cooling, it goes to the cooling relay, like the, like the what? Contact now we'll show you this real quick. What if I want to troubleshoot this? Okay, let's say right now, okay, let's pull it up on here. I got a really good picture of it on here for you. So let's just look at it on here. Okay, that should be pretty good for you, easy for you to see now. Okay, now follow along. These pictures are in your book. Okay, they're in your book right there for you. All right. So let's look at this. If I don't know fans not coming on, all right, there's something I can do right there at the thermostat, can I? It's nothing but a set of selectors. Go back to last week, watch the videos I made on thermostats. I can take the thermostat off and have just a sub base. Well, I can take a jumper wire and connect it between R and G to see if that's gonna come on and I should listen for it to come on. I can take it and jump it out to Y and listen for Y to come on. Now let's say I hook it to G, R to G and I don't hear the blower on. Well, I know I'm sending power to it so now I'm gonna go to where the indoor unit is and find out why it's not turned on. And right there at the thermostat wires to the unit, I should have power between what? R in common and G at common. Because remember, when G's energized, it becomes just like R. And so it's power here. When this is jumped out with a wire like that, it jumps right over that. So if I had a wire like that, I put it on R and I put it on G and this wire is now turning G into R, right? And continuing the path. Now, if I jump it out and it turns on, then I put the thermostat back on and try to get it to turn on and it won't, the thermostat switch is bad. Now, how easy is that? I've had heaters before. You know, heater will not come on for anything. I jump it out at the sub base, the heater comes on. I need a new thermostat. Okay? That's how you would jump that thermostat out. Okay? Any questions about that? So your book says the next step to take the thermostat off the sub base and jump it out manually. R to G would do what? Well, let's read it. Let's read it together. Control voltage must be present in order for the thermostat to operate. Turn the switch to on. If it comes on, the low voltage is at. So anytime you walk in the house and you turn the thermostat on and you hear the blower come on, you've just eliminated the whole um, uh, concern of not having low voltage. That's all working. All right. If the fan does not operate, it may be a low voltage problem. Check voltage to the transformer. Now, it says it can be removed from the sub base. Put the jumper between R and G. The fan should come on. Between R and W, the white wire, heat should come on. Between R and Y, no, that's not Randy, the cooling should come on. It's defective if the circuits operate with the jumpers. Then, the thermostat. If, if, it's, if it doesn't turn on, it's not the thermostat. Okay? 
That's the way that works. You will have this, all of this, in your lab manual in the lab. Alright, so let's talk about troubleshooting that thermostat a little bit. On a call for heat, power is passed to the heating relays. On electric heating systems, the fan will also be in a jaws for call for heat. On a call for cooling, the following system components are now controlled. The compressor, the outdoor fan motor, and the indoor fan motor. All of that is controlled with the cooling circuit. Alright, any questions about that? Now remember this, when you go up in the attic to check the transformer, if you don't have 24 volts, make sure you got high voltage going to the transformer. If you don't have high voltage going to your transformer, you won't have low voltage coming out the other side of it. All right, don't ask the transformer to work if you won't even give it power. Does that, does that make sense to you? Does anybody got any questions about that? Okay, very good. Y'all so quiet today, I just don't believe it. Now, the compressor and condenser fan motor are wired in parallel, controlled by the wired terminal, which passes power to the contactor coil. Contacts close and energize the compressor and condenser fan. The indoor fan will operate continuously when the fan switches in the on position. It will operate only when the compressor is operating if the fan switches in the auto position okay in the auto position now troubleshooting amperage now if you look at picture ah they don't have those pictures up here that are in your book they have this and that's kind of what i wanted to show you but it don't look like that it's in your book all right so we will Wait on this for the next video and I'll have this out for you, okay? But one little thing we'll cover real quick though is troubleshooting amperage of a low voltage circuit. Okay, let's go ahead. Now we'll wait for that for tomorrow. We'll, we'll get into all that circuitry tomorrow. All right, so we covered a lot on thermostats today and also troubleshooting thermostats, okay? So pay attention to that. Read over those notes and you, get, you have in your book.